Hi, I'm Telly Guy, and I'm going to show you how I transfer films to the digital format. This is the camera I'm using, it's a Sony PD-170. It's a standard def camera and it works fine for what I'm doing. You can use whatever projector you want. You can use a standard 8, Super 8, 16mm or even 9.5. They're all the same. They've all got to be set up exactly the same way. So this is the projector I'm going to be using. It's a 1610D UMIG. And this is uh, one of our, my customers' films. And before I show it, I have to clean it. And I put it onto this, which is really for editing purposes. So I take the cloth and wrap it around the film and then wind the film through like so, right the way through to the end. Make sure that there's no joins or anything. This works fine with a small reel. When you're doing the bigger reels, the 200 foots or the 400 foots, the chances are that you come across where it's been joined and the join is broken. And it's very easy to take it off and repair it. The last thing you want is to get halfway through the film and then the, the film breaks and you've got to start all over again. So there we go. We've gone through there, that's gone up to the end. Then I just take it off like so and wind it back onto that film. There it is. Now we take it off of here. We now go over to put it on the projector. The projector I'm using here is a UMIG 610D. Instead of having claws that go through the film to pull it through, it works off the lights. So if you've got a film that is a, a little bit dodgy that may break or may snag up, that is good because if it snags up, it won't, won't if it was going through a, a camera that had claws, it would probably tear the film to pieces. So when you're, when you're working with people's films, you don't want to, we don't want any damages like that to happen. Now we're going to put this um, film onto the projector and it goes on there quite easily. So there we put it up there. So we've got it all laced up correctly. When we turn it on and it comes up on the screen. I'm going to put my hands in front of it now because we're not actually, we're not actually copying this. But if you make sure that that is in the camera and then you go back to the camera here and you can see by doing this, zoom back on it and there you see it's getting smaller and then you press the front of it and you go up and you get it to fit that picture. This system that I have here, the projector has to go into there and come out of there at a 45 degree angle. Now, if you don't have that correct, you get a keystone effect. It isn't actually square. So what you have to do, you have to look through here and make sure that that is lined up with the camera. But when you set up different cameras, obviously it's going to change and you have to have the different pieces of wood that I've made up to match the cameras. This is the one for the standard eight. I've got another piece of wood that puts uh, that I put on there to do the Super 8 and another piece of wood when I put the 60mm camera on or 60mm projector on, which is a massive projector. And I have to move this, move that away there so that I can get the screen and the reels on. I love the, uh, the power you've got with the computers because any small things that go wrong, like you don't quite get it up to the size you want or you've got it slightly to the left or slightly to the right, you can move it around. You can put things right that you couldn't do years ago. That is the, the noisiest projector of the lot, I think. I don't just copy films. I copy all the formats, all the VHS, the VHS-C, Hi8, Video8, Digital8, DV Cam and Mini DV. Now, when the film is running, I've got three screens here that I can look at it on. I can see it on that screen, which is coming off the computer. That is coming straight off the camera. That shows you where you're going wrong. Now, looking at that, the film is slightly off to the left. 
but when you look at the where it's coming off the camera it's not off to the left so when you get it when you transfer it to your other computer you will get the picture slightly off to the left with black down the side and that is the beauty of having it going to the computer because you can just on the computer slide the film over well now I've captured all of the film and got it into the into this computer um, now all the computers in the in the uh, in the room are all networked so I can copy it from this computer to the other computer put it into Adobe Premiere make it into a memory stick so now I'm at my edit computer and I've got the files loaded just select Cinebox because that's what I call the other computer where I've done the transfers click on digweed and I load up one of the channel one of the films that on digweed let's go for that one there and I would take that into looking at the file where digweed is and I find digweed and now I've got to transfer from cinebox there digweed there and take digweed from the cinebox and put it into digweed on the um, on Premiere Pro and as soon as that's loaded in I can then put it onto the timeline and do what I need to do to it you know if it's slightly to the left or slightly to the right or not quite big enough I can make it bigger I can move it around and also I'm using all of the stuff in Premiere Pro to boost the picture because when I transfer the picture I use a, a, a feature on the on the camera that I've got that is spotlight so if I put spotlight on on the camera then that tones down all the whites and it's very good when you get somebody like a, a wedding a wedding um, a wedding video and the bride has this bright white dress on it will take it will cut it back quite a bit you don't get a blast of white on the on the on the screen open up premiere open digweed and there it is and now I go to file import and I import the, um, the file that I want and then I make a file on the a new file on the computer and take digweed the file that I've just loaded in and put it onto the timeline right there's the one so I've loaded it onto the timeline now it, when it comes up on the timeline it's got all of the the sound as well well it was silent so I click on that now and go to unlink and then take out the sound so we've got no sound on it and when I go across the front there's the uh, picture get to where it starts there and just chop it off there <laughs> that's where it starts and as you can see it's more or less in the, bit, the middle of the picture but because it's it's okay I don't need to do anything with it I can then take go over to the effects in Premiere and uh, go on to video edits and adjust and take the auto levels put the auto levels on and you'll see the picture come up brighter see there it comes up brighter then I can take the um, the blur and the sharpen and I can take the sharpen and put that on there and then I take the uh, transform the trans transform cr the crop and put the crop onto it now I go back to the the um, the actual fire the actual film clip and auto levels that's fine sharpen I can go into sharpen and I can take it up to I usually go up to about 30 there's on 30 and then when they do the cropping I can move the pictures in move the line in there you see I can crop out all that rubbish on the side there uh, and the top 
come down on the top and that's then done. Then on the right hand side, I can bring it in on the right hand side and then down at the bottom, on the bottom of the picture, I can bring it up there. So there you now you've got a nice, a nice picture that is completely, well actually there's some, there's some, um, there's some fluff on there. Well I've tried to get rid of that when it was projecting and realised that it's on the film, not in the projector. So that's going to have to stay there unfortunately. And, um, and once I've done that, I can then take out all of the bad bits. I don't know if there's any bad bits in this. We'll have a look at it quickly. Yeah, they see there's there's the piece there that's nothing on the film at all. So I just I just cut that there and go right through that, get rid of all of that stuff. Go back to where the picture comes on. There it comes on there. So I click there, take that piece out, ripple ripple delete, get rid of it. And then um go forward. Oh, there's another piece there, another 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 piece that needs to come out and go forward there is this where it finishes so we take that piece out and then I go forward uh, well that's not that's that is just overexposed so I can't do anything with that I just leave it as it is and I go through to the end and when I get to the end that's where the end is so I just stop it there cut the picture off get rid of that piece at the end all fingers and thumbs here and then I, I just uh, put a, a fade in there and that comes out. Now when I've done all of that and I want to make it into a, a memory stick I make sure that it starts at the front and it it is there's three seconds before it actually comes in. Uh, so we wind it forward to three, uh, three seconds there then move this back to three seconds close that gap up, move this at the end so that it goes sort of three seconds after the uh, after it's finished. When I've finished it all and I'm happy with it, I press Control and M and it comes up with 264 at the top, the format, and MPEG-4 Progressive. And you've got to give it somewhere you're going to save it, so I click on that and I'll go save it in digweed. Uh, telephone's ringing, I'll just answer that. Telly Cine guy. Oh, uh, hello there, it's um, Andy Digweed. I, I came over last Saturday with, some, with about 20 films. I just... Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, uh, just, I'm just finishing, off, finishing them off oh, now. Okay. When will they be ready to be picked up? Um, probably pick them up. I don't know whether you're around on Sunday, are you? Yeah. yeah. Fine. Could you make it in the morning? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ten o'clock? Yeah, that's fine. Lovely. Okay. All right. See you then. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Isn't that strange? <laughs> MPEG-4, digweed MPEG-4. And I just check that it's okay. There's nothing, nothing wrong there. There's nothing wrong there. Okay. So then I, I press export exporting it to a, a memory stick and once that goes through it's going to take about a minute to encode uh, so when it takes you a minute to encode I can burn a, a memory stick. We started Tele Cine Guy in 2008 so it's been uh, 15 years that you know that uh, I've been doing it. It's been very hard over the last couple of years not having people in. I just meet people at the f at the front door, take the films off, and then they come and pick it up, and I <laughs> I give it to them at the front door. But prior to that, people always came up with up into the room, into my edit room, and talked to me about what they want done. So how many feet? Of <laughs> have, you, have you transferred enough film to go around the world once, do you think? Um, I'm getting close to it, I think, in 15 years. Once a guy phoned me up and said, can you transfer 16 mil? And I said, certainly, what have you got? He said, well, I'm taking this to the uh, War Museum. And he said, I'm taking it there and they won't have a projector, so I want to put it onto a, a DVD 
so that they can have a look at it. I've given them so much stuff in the past that I'm not going to give them this. I'm, they're going to they're going to have to pay me for it. So I said, yeah, fine. Well, let me know when you're coming. I'll get the projector all set up. Anyway, he turned up and it, it was on a pancake. You know, when it's on a pancake, you've got to put it onto a reel so you can show it. So I thought, well, I want to be careful with this. So I put it onto the projector and I put a pencil through the hole in it and wound it on by hand very, very carefully. It's only about 10 minute film, so I wound it all on. And when I showed it, it was Hitler on a plane in 1932, I think. Like somebody will say, well, you know, I want this film done because it's of my, of my mother or my father or whatever. And when they come and pick it up and they're standing there watching it and you can see the tears rolling down their face because <laughs> it's, the, it's the first time they've seen their, their, their mother or their father for years, you know, they haven't seen the film. I've got several projectors in the in the garage that people have given me. You know, they said that, that, that here's my projector. It doesn't work. And on occasions, I've, I've I've put a bulb in them and put a new drive belt in, and they work perfectly okay. But uh, you know, once once they get their films transferred to uh, to DVD or memory stick. But the thing is now that DVDs are on their way out. I still have to be prepared to do a DVD if they, because you know, they say this, this is for my, I'm doing this for my mother or my father and they, over, they are of an age that they don't know how to, to use a memory stick. I said, well, it's simple. You just got a little slot on the television, you plug it in there and away you go. There is a page on the, on the website that um, tells you all of the formats I do. There's standard 8, Super 8, 16mm and 9.5, but I also do VHS-C, VHS, Video 8, High 8 and Digital 8. And then of course you've got Mini DV and DV Cam, and, and I, I know I do the professional formats, which is Beta Cam, yeah, and uh, U-Matic. Well, there you go, that's the job done. Digweed on a two gigabyte card.